Before we start today's painting, I'm really happy to announce that my latest Skillshare class is now up. I'll be painting this blueberry and vanilla soft serve ice cream cone. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably have seen it before. This took me a few tries before creating this class, but I'm really happy with how this turned out, especially with the color combinations. I used a few new colors that I've never used before prior to painting this, and I hope you guys enjoy painting along as well. If you've never been a member of Skillshare, you can go to the link in my description box for a free trial to watch this class or any other classes you choose during that trial. So I hope to see you guys there. Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'll be attempting to paint a fairly loose landscape painting of an island beach. I was watching old Survivor series and this was really roughly based on one of the locations, so I can't really link the reference this time, but I mostly just painted this without any photos in front of me anyway because I didn't want to be too tied down with the reference so I can be a bit more loose and not be distracted by details. Like usual, I masked off the sides first before I start painting and before we start, I'm just going to show you the colors that I'll be using. The first one here is Olive Green by Daniel Smith, Buff Titanium by Daniel Smith, Yellow Ochre by Holbein, Burnt Umber by Holbein, Russian Blue by Holbein, Ultramarine Violet by M. Graham, Cobalt Teal by M. Graham, Compost Blue by Holbein. This is Paints Grey Bluish by Schmincke that I'll be using straight out of the tube, and I'll also be using Bleed Proof White by Dr. Paige Martins. I also have a couple of optional colors which are Lemon Yellow by Holbein and Quin Red by Daniel Smith for the flowers here. I'm going to start by just drawing out the horizon line. You can also sketch out a few other things but I want to keep this one loose so I won't be indicating other shapes. To start painting, I'm going to use a mixture of Compost Blue and Paints Grey Bluish. You can adjust how much grey compared to blue you want. The grey will obviously make the sky a bit darker as if it's a cloudy day, and the more Compost Blue, it'll indicate more of a sunny day. The more I paint towards the bottom, the more water I use, so there's a slight gradient and I also added a bit of buff titanium for a slight warmth and color. I'm just piling on more pigments here for the top to add a bit of contrast and after that I'm going to use rolled up tissue to pick up some of the colors to depict the clouds on the sky. I'm just rolling the tissue around and twisting it to create random shapes and you can place it however you would like to. When placing the pigments for the sky, please don't be shy with how much paint you use because once the surface is wet, even if you use a lot of paint, it's just going to spread out and the more vibrant the sky is, the more paint you're going to pick up with your tissue so the clouds will be more visible. I'm working fairly quick here because I want the paper to still be wet as I'm lifting the colors and this way I can also keep building on with more paint to fix certain areas and lift more to get the shape that I'm looking for for the clouds. I want to also add darker clouds close to the bottom area but I think at this point the paper was still a bit too wet so it just spread out too much but that's something that I'm going to build upon later for this painting. I felt like the blue at the top was a bit too light so I added more color while the paper is still wet and I just painted on while avoiding the whites for the clouds. The paper should still be a little bit damp but almost dry and now I'm going to use a bit of olive green to add it to the blue mix that I had to paint the vegetation. For this, I'm just twirling my brush around using the tip to create different textures so the edges are a bit random. Here I'm also playing with the height to make the placement as random as possible so it looks more natural. At this point, I'm just basically mapping out the features that I'm going to place in this painting 
for the water I just use compost blue and I'm just going to do a light wash to indicate the placement first. I'm going to paint it diagonally across near where the foreground is going to be and then continue on with a bit of buff titanium and also a little bit of yellow ochre for the sand. I also used buff titanium to add underneath the vegetation to indicate that there's another beach but at this point I wasn't actually sure about it and it's something that I can always pile on top of later. This is basically the sketching portion where I place elements down as well as just the rough composition because it's still the first layer and this is not a style that I'm used to so I'm glad that I can do these initial sketches with paint to see what I like and just progress naturally as I build on the layers. Once the first layer of the vegetation is dry, I added Prussian blue to the olive green to make a dark green color and as you can see I separated the silhouette of the vegetation that I painted so now it looks like that there are two layers of vegetation. Next I'm using a mixture of Prussian blue with burnt umber to create a dark color. It looks a bit green at this point because I used quite a lot of Prussian blue but it's okay because again this is just the initial sketching portion. I just indicated the placement of the rocks and I crisscrossed my brush to create different angular strokes to give more of a rigid structure. The paper is still a bit wet though so the color is spreading but it's okay because I'm going to layer on the details later. I'm a bit behind here but what I did was layer on a bit more compost blue so I added the vibrancy of the blue and I also used ultramarine violet to indicate the dark areas in the water which could be from rocks or reefs. Towards the shoreline, I added a light layer of paints gray to indicate a bit of wet sand but again, this is the sketchy part that I'll build on later so it might look a bit odd at this point but it's okay. Going back to the vegetation, or there are probably mangroves at the back here, I'm going to build on the colors by alternating yellow ochre and also a bit of Prussian blue as I get towards the left side. You can also use olive green, but since yellow ochre and Prussian blue makes a muted green anyway, I'm just going to use them as the main colors. Once I've placed those colors, I went back in with a dry brush but I'm using my small brush this time to pull the excess wet paint and create a dry brush texture at the top to give it a soft but textured effect. If I wanted some areas to be even darker than the value of the Prussian blue, I also opt for paints grey instead. I'm also going to apply the same thing for the vegetation on the right hand side as well as the ones in front by adding darker colors from the bottom up, leaving the top section a bit lighter so the layers are still visible for the ones on the left here. For even darker areas, just like what I mentioned before, I added paints gray instead of the Prussian blue since it is darker in value. And for the bottom, I used a mixture of paints gray with burnt umber to deepen it further and suggest that the greens are slightly lifted off the water. I'm sticking to my small brush here since the area is fairly small and I want to start building up on the texture using a thick consistency and a dry brush load to suggest shapes of branches. I'm going to wait for that section to dry and I'm going to move on to the water. I'm using cobalt teal to paint the water from the horizon line downward so the color is darker at the back compared to the front. And as for the darker areas, I'm going to add Prussian blue. You can use ultramarine violet if you're looking for a brighter blue, but since I used quite a bit of paints gray for the sky, which means the color is a bit muted, I want to keep that consistency of color for the water as well. But if you decide to make it a brighter sunny day, you can also use ultramarine violet for that part. As for the placement, I made the lines of the dark blue a bit more compact towards the back to suggest distance. And as I get towards the front, I'm just using a thin consistency of paints gray. I'm going to leave that section to dry off for now and work on the rocks. I'm using a mix of paints grey with burnt umber and I'm using a fairly dry brush load to create textured lines. And I'm also going to add more rocks in the composition by 
mixing a bit more burnt umber in the ratio to add more warmth for the tone. I'm trying to make the placement as natural as possible by playing with the sizes, but also keep in mind that the further away the rocks are, the smaller they are going to be. So I'm also going to exaggerate the size as I get closer to the foreground to add a bit of perspective in this composition. The paint should dry quite quickly since I didn't use too much water for this and this time I'm going to go back in with my small brush and use a very thick consistency of the same mixture but with a bit more paint spray bluish to create the textures again but this time with a dry brush consistency and I'm using the side of my brush to create the rough textured look for the rocks and as I get Further away from the foreground into the distance, I added a bit more burnt umber in the mixture to suit the base color of the rocks and still using that dry brush consistency to create those textures for additional details. Once I'm done adding the textures on the rocks, I'm going to add shadows by using Payne's Grey in a thin to medium consistency, but I tend to use a slightly thicker consistency for the shadows closest to the rocks, so the further away the shadow, the softer the colors. Going back to the water now, I'm going to use a thin consistency of paints grey to glaze over that whole water area at the back. That whole section should be a bit damp and now I'm going to use Prussian blue to add on to the darker areas. The same thing still applies as before, the lines should be thinner and more compact when they're further away and vice versa. You can see that the colors on the vegetation at the back are a bit faded. I'm going to layer on more details by working on the branches first using a mix of Prussian blue with burnt umber with my small brush and I'm going to work from the bottom and flick up to create very fine branches. You can also switch around the colors. I like to add some yellow ochre and Prussian blue to add to some of the leaf portion as well but I just want to make sure that the bottom is much darker than the top sections. I think I'm fairly happy with the vegetation now, so I'm going to go back to painting the water. I want to add on the darker areas using Prussian blue, and I also want to add rocks where the water is, and for that I'm going to use the Paints Grey Bluish. I've been referring to the Paints Grey Bluish as just Paints Grey almost this whole time, because the name is a bit too long for me to say each time, but I hope you guys know what I'm referring to. Anyway, going back to the painting, as I get closer to the shoreline, I added more paints grey as a wash. I try to make the edges come forwards and backwards following a diagonal composition to represent the edges of the water, then continue on with a bit of buff titanium and also yellow ochre for the sand. <laughs> 
You want to make sure you have all the elements mostly down before moving on to the next step, but since I'm okay with what I've got, I'm going to add on the tree branches in the foreground. I just want a few branches sticking out at the top and bottom of the right hand side. And for that I use a mixture of paints grey bluish with burnt umber in a thick consistency with a dry brush load using my small brush to make sure I can create very delicate lines for the branches. And as for the larger branches, I just added thicker lines, but once I have a few, I'm going to move on to adding the leaves. I'm going to be covering most of the branches with leaves, but the reason why I painted quite a lot of them here is because I find it really useful when I'm painting the leaves later to go around the branches, and I find that it makes it easier for me to create more of a realistic placement for the leaves, but if this doesn't help for you, you don't have to paint as many branches as what I'm doing here. For the leaves, I started with a mix of olive green and a bit of yellow ochre, and I'm just using my synthetic brush to paint on random leaf shapes by playing around with the angles and also with the thickness and thinness of the lines. I'm most comfortable painting leaves with my synthetic brush because it's really pressure sensitive and this is what I usually use to paint flowers and leaves and things like that, but just find the brush that is most suitable and comfortable for you personally. You don't really have to follow all the steps here strictly, but adjust with the materials that you have at home. As I mentioned before, for the light green, I used a mixture of olive green with yellow ochre, but as you can see, I'm going to also build upon the value as I get closer to the sides or the main tree. And to darken it, I just added Prussian blue to the previous mix and I'm just going to keep adding either yellow ochre to lighten it or Prussian blue and burnt umber to darken it. But for the darkest green, I would add paints grey bluish to the previous mixture. The main objective to paint the branches here is to add more density the closer the branches are to the main tree on the right hand side. But as for the branches which grows outwards, I want them to be a bit more spaced out and less dense with less leaves to give it more of a delicate feel. I'm going to go back to the water now and add a light glaze using cobalt teal because I felt like the water was looking a bit too muted so I wanted to bring back the saturation and I also want to increase the value of some of the shadows from the rocks and balance out the color with the new composition with the branches that I painted recently. If you're happy with the sky that you've painted earlier, you can leave it be, but for me personally, after I've painted all the new elements, the sky looks a bit too empty so I want to balance it out by adding darker clouds using paints grey bluish in a medium to thin consistency. I'm making the clouds a bit thinner as I get closer to the horizon line, just like what I did with the water, to add more of a sense of distance in the painting. To add more detail and texture in the foreground, I'm going to use whatever green mixtures I have left on my palette and add some dry vegetation around the rocks. I just find that these simple details bring so much more life to the painting and they're the fun parts to bring the painting together. I'm just using my small brush here and I paint it the same way as I did with the branches for the vegetation at the back by just using a dry brush consistency and flick the brush upwards to create really delicate lines. Here comes my favorite part of the painting, which is to add white. I'm using bleed proof white here because of the very opaque nature and I'm going to use this to paint the details for the distant waves and the sea foam on the water. I'm using a dry brush again for this as I find that the texture brings so much detail once we have a good solid base for the elements of the painting. For the sea foam, I like to replicate the movement of the water by painting curvy lines horizontally. You can also layer this just like what I did with the waves painting and also my recent painting of the beach sunset. As for the waves, I like to just wiggle using the side of my brush to create the uneven texture of the waves. To finish off the water, I added a very thick and opaque white for the edges of the sea foam to make sure that the edges are visible against the shoreline. 
For the final touch up, I want to add flowers to the branches and also some flowers or petals which might have fallen on the rocks or the sand. This is completely optional but I feel like adding flowers will add a nice pop of color to the composition. I'm using bleed proof white as the base color because it gives a nice base color for me to paint any color on top later. But before we do that, I'm going to wait for the white to completely dry and meanwhile I'm just going to do a few dry brush strokes using a very thin consistency of the white to add additional textures for the rocks using a light color. Now going back to the flowers, for the color of the flowers you can use any of your favorite colors. Personally, I'm just going to create um, something like a coral color using a mix of quin red and lemon yellow to paint on the white. But of course, you can use blues or purples or oranges. I personally feel that a warm tone will benefit this composition though, as it will complement the blue of the water and the sky. Then to finish off the flowers, I'm just using the same mixture with added quin red and burnt umber to paint the center. And this will just add a bit of value to suggest more form and depth of the flower. And the rest of this is just final adjustment to finish off your painting and balance everything out. So this is basically done. I'm just going to unmask everything to reveal the painting. I bought a whole bunch of masking tape but they sat under the sun a bit too long so the adhesive is not very good anymore. But I'm just going to clean out the edges using a bit of bleed proof white to hide the smudges and that's pretty much it. I really enjoyed painting this one and it's definitely a style that I need to study more of. But I just really enjoyed the process of not clinging onto the details and to just paint loosely. Anyway, like usual, all the lists of tools as well as my social media links will be in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!